one of the most misunderstood punctuation marks in the English language are quotation marks. So what we want to do is look and see what are the things that we do with quotation marks? How do we use them? Um, one of the situations where you do use quotation marks is if you are using the exact words of a source. So if you look at, for example, doing the in-text citations of quoted material, if you're using the exact words that came from your source, you're going to put quote marks around it, both before and after, to show the reader these words are words that came from that source. This also applies in spoken English, where we look and see uh, what exact words came out of somebody's mouth. For example, um, I might have, quote, I don't feel so well. comma, close quote, Wally said. So what we have in this sentence, we have quote marks around the exact words that came out of Wally's mouth. So that's what his exact words were. Now, if you're not quoting the exact words that came out of Wally's mouth, you're not going to use quote marks. So if I'm not using the exact words Wally said, um, I might have something like, uh, Wally said that he didn't feel well. So what we have here, these are not the exact words that came out of Wally's mouth. This is what's known as an indirect quote. So if you're not using the exact words that Wally said, you don't use quote marks. You also use quote marks for things like titles, in particular titles of shorter works. So titles of a short story or titles of a poem would get quote marks around them so that um, we know uh, that's a, a small work. If you have something longer, if you have like a whole novel or a book, that you get italics or underlines. But if you're talking about a story or a poem or a song, um, you would use quote marks. For instance, my favorite Beatles tune is yesterday. So we have quote marks around that because that's the title of the song. Um, another thing that you use quotation marks for is introducing jargon or, or uh, foreign words. Um, or actually, I guess we say technical words, I, I think I'm going to say. Um, and what you would do, I mentioned introduce. The first time you bring up some technical term that the reader may not know, you would put quote marks. Once you have defined it, though, then you wouldn't put quote marks around it from then on. Um, for example, I might say something like, because sailboats can't go directly into the wind, they follow a zigzag path. This is called 
quote, tacking. So we have here, um, we've introduced this term. From now on, I can now, I don't need to put the quote marks around tacking. But this is something when you're introducing a term, when you're letting the reader know, here's something that we're going to define this technical term. Uh, another way to use quote marks is to show sarcasm or disbelief. Belief. So if I want to show that I don't really believe something, that is, um, for example, I might have something like uh, some upstanding citizen close quotes, stole my radio antenna. And so I've got quote marks around the phrase upstanding citizen to show, no, I don't really believe that this person is an upstanding citizen. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, probably this person is far from an upstanding citizen. Uh, although, as it turns out, uh, the uh, person, whoever it was, actually did me a favor uh, because what was stolen was a cheapo General Motors original equipment antenna. And when I bought a new antenna, I could suddenly pick up radio stations twice as far away. Uh, but still, I put quote marks around upstanding citizen to show I don't really believe that person was an upstanding citizen. Um, now, because quote marks show sarcasm, that means you can't use quote marks for emphasis. If you want to emphasize something, putting quote marks around it is exactly the wrong thing to do, because quote marks are showing disbelief. So by putting quote marks around something you want to emphasize, what happens is you instead turn it into uh, exactly the opposite of what you're trying to say. So for example, at one of the marinas at Elephant Butte, uh, there used to be this sign. It said, quote, dogs, unquote, must be on a leash. What this sentence is saying is that so-called dogs have to be on a leash. But if you have a real dog, it doesn't have to be on a leash. Uh, so if you've got a uh, chihuahua or a Pekingese or something, then you need to put that on a leash. It's a little something that thinks it's a dog but isn't really. On the other hand, your German Shepherd, your Great Dane, you can just let those wander around at, um, at large. So what happens is this particular sign then ends up meaning the opposite. <coughs> 